boxing insider Dan Rayfield joins us to discuss the state of the fight game. And Dan, after Saturday night, where did all the chips fall? Well, the chips fell pretty much in Andy Ruiz's lap because he <laughs> scored one of the most monumental upsets that we've seen in the history of boxing. It may not be on the level of what happened between Buster Douglas and Mike Tyson. I don't rank it necessarily even as big as the upset that Haseem Rockman scored in 2001 against Lennox Lewis, but it is way up there. Uh, certainly in my career covering boxing, it's one of the biggest upsets, heavyweight division or otherwise, that I have covered. And, uh, you know, Andy Ruiz is in a great position right now. Uh, he's going to have a rematch with Anthony Joshua probably in November. Uh, Joshua had the right to exercise that option. He had 30 days after the fight to do so. They did it this week, so they didn't waste any time, the Joshua camp. So they picked up that, that contractual right to a rematch. We'll see it again, and that'll be up to Andy Ruiz to see if he can prove that it was a legit win or just a fluke. And speaking of rematches, Deontay Wilder is saying there is going to be a rematch against Tyson Fury, assuming that he defeats Tom Schwartz next week in Las Vegas, that it's going to happen in early 2020. But Bob Arum, who is Tyson Fury's promoter, uh, kind of put in the brakes on it, saying... Uh, it's going to happen, but I'm not ready to talk about it, or it might happen, but we're not really sure. <laughs> What's going on, Dan? Well, Deontay would not have said that if it wasn't true. His team says they have a deal. Uh, I believe they have a deal, and obviously Bob uh, is obviously promoting the fight next week with Tom Schwartz, so wants to get bang for buck on that. Obviously, that's a big event for ESPN+. Plus. But here's the other thing about that. Whether he has a rematch with Tyson Fury in early 2020 is not only contingent on Tyson Fury defeating Tom Schwartz next week, but prior to Deontay saying that he was going to have the rematch with Tyson Fury, he also said a few days before that that next up in the fall will be a rematch against Luis King Kong Ortiz. He's a fighter that Deontay knocked out in the 10th round last year in one of the fights of the year in a fight in which Luis Ortiz had Deontay very badly hurt before Deontay rallied and scored a big knockout. So he's looking at that fight in the fall. Tyson Fury has the fight coming up uh, next week. And then, of course, they say, supposedly, they'll do a fight in early 2020. I mean, it's boxing. Anything can happen. Uh, they're both favorites to win those fights. But we saw what happens when there are favorites. Andrew Ruiz proved that an upset is certainly possible. Tom Schwartz will be very inspired, I would imagine, by what he may have seen last week. Dan, in the aftermath of what happened Saturday night at Madison Square Garden, and you were there, Anthony Joshua, an undefeated heavyweight champion, 29 years old, seemed to be in great shape. Such a huge star, it's almost hard to fathom here in the U.S. just how big he has been in the U.K. for the last several years, selling out Wembley, etc. Where does he stand now? Obviously, we're going to get that rematch, but in terms of reputation, you've seen fighters stumble like this, try to make comebacks. How do you think he'll respond to that challenge? He said all the right things after the fight. He was humble. He gave Andy Ruiz credit and respect said he just has to work harder. It was things that he did wrong, not necessarily things that Andy Ruiz did. And he knows he needs to go in there and shore up his defense, have a better game plan, maybe have a little better stamina. Uh, there have been a lot of rumors circulating, uh, not necessarily proven, that there were some issues in the training camp in the week or two leading up to the fight where he may have been knocked around a little bit in sparring, maybe knocked down. Perhaps that has something to do with it. Uh, but the bottom line is Anthony Joshua, you know, he's a good guy. He makes terrific fights. He has a huge fan base, as you mentioned. And now it's up to him to see if he can replicate what two great champions before him did, also who are Olympic gold medals. And I'm talking about Lennox Lewis mm -hmm. and Vladimir Klitschko. So Anthony Joshua got knocked down four times and got knocked out. And people are, you know, really being basically nasty to him, saying, you know, he, he, he's a fraud. He was exposed. Well, let's everybody slow down just a little bit. When Lennox Lewis got knocked out by Oliver McCall and then later against Haseem Rockman, he was able to come back and win a title again, have big victories after that. After he regained the title in an immediate rematch with Rock, when he went on and had two of his biggest wins of his career against Mike Tyson and against Vitaly Klitschko. Vladimir Klitschko, Vitaly's younger brother, when he got knocked out in 2004 in a vacant heavyweight title fight by Lehman Brewster in another monumental upset, everybody left him for dead. It was his, uh, you know, another knockout loss for him. They said he should retire, that he was no good. Vladimir Klitschko said he was on the bottom of the sport. And, and basically people were kicking dirt on him as a 30-year-old guy with Olympic gold medal and a, and a previous heavyweight title reign. And what happened after that? He picked himself up. He got back in the groove. He went to work on his defense, on his stamina, on a lot of different things. He went on and became one of the greatest heavyweight champions yeah. in the history of boxing. Made 18 title defenses once he regained another title and uh, had one of the great reigns in the history of the sport. So the question will now be, can Anthony Joshua 
uh, replicate what Lennox Lewis did and what Vladimir Klitschko did or come close? Or is he going to be just a guy that had a, a really good career, won a title and got knocked out and was really never heard from at the top again? That's the, what we're all asking about. Interesting times in the heavyweight division, perhaps the most interesting in at least a couple of decades. Dan Rayfield, who covers the sport so closely for us. It's always a pleasure, sir. Thank you for having joined us.